Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to learn about frequency distribution. At the end of this video, you know how to collect data and represent it in a tabular form that is, in a frequency table. You'll also know how to group data into class intervals. This is Miss Elsa. She is a teacher. She needs to collect data on the birth year of about 35 students. So what did she do? She told her students to write it on a piece of paper. After gathering all the information about the bat years, she needs to organize the data in a certain order so that the information can be easily obtained and interpreted. To achieve this, she had to present the raw data in a frequency distribution table. A frequency distribution table contains the events or categories, a tally chart, and a frequency column. The three features of a frequency distribution table are the events or categories, a tally chart, and a frequency column. The main feature is the event or category whose occurrence you are trying to analyze. In our example, the birth year of the students is the category. What is tally? Tally is a way of keeping count by drawing marks. You draw a tally for each of the first four counts, and at the fifth count, you draw another tally across the previous four tallies. What is frequency? Frequency is the number of occurrences of an event. In our example, seven students were given birth to in the year 2006. This means the frequency is seven. After arranging the data in a tabular form, Miss Elsa could easily analyze and interpret the information. Let's now discuss the uses of a frequency distribution table. The main use of a frequency distribution table is to easily analyze and interpret information. For example, if the appropriate age year for Miss Elsa's class was 2008, she knew how many students were older or younger. Also, she could easily identify that most of the students in the class were given birth to in 2007. Let's now talk about grouped frequency distribution table. At the end of the term, Miss Elsa needs to analyze the examination scores of her students. She realized that the marks were cumbersome and there would be a lot of number occurrences, so she decided to group the data. When data is divided into groups, it is called a grouped frequency distribution. Now, look at the scores of the students in Miss Elsa's class. Before grouping the data, she considers the range first, which is 5 to 50. These are the lowest and highest scores. With this range, the data can be grouped into class intervals, such as 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, and 41 to 50. We now get a table like this. This is called a grouped frequency distribution table. So we have come to the end of frequency distribution. In this video, you learned how to collect data and represent it in a tabular form that is, in frequency tables. In this video, you learned that a frequency table has a column for events or categories, tallies, and then frequency. Lastly, you also learned how to group data into class intervals. We hope to see you in our next video. Thank you for watching.